Thanks for clicking. We received major news in China's real estate crisis this week as real estate developer Kaiza, who you might remember defaulted on their debt in December, entered into a strategic partnership with state firms as a means to shore up liquidity, meaning no cash. I need money. We also received news on real estate developer Genro, which also defaulted on its debt. Despite defaulting on its debt, Genro was one of the few real estate developers that didn't miss the March 31st deadline for these developers to come clean on their debts. Finally, it came out this week that China's PPI, their producer price index, and their CPI, consumer price index, rose much higher than expected. So what I want to do today is skip Evergrande. Okay, okay, okay and go over Kaiser's newfound partnership with Beijing and the state firms, which is a bailout by any other name. Then we'll go over the developments made by Genro this week, whose financial assessments show a very bleak picture for China's real estate developers. Then finally, I want to go over the PPI and CPI data released from China, as higher costs emerging there will no doubt lead to higher costs in the United States and, China and Canada, and obviously higher interest rates. Oh, good. Speaking of Canada, we are set to receive Canada's inflation data next week. With interest rates in Canada already rising and the United States already at 8.5% inflation rate, the rate of Canada's inflation will no doubt have a big impact on the timing and severity of Canada's next rate hikes. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, let's get into Kaiser. As mentioned, Kaiza, which is the second largest holder of offshore debt behind Evergrande, entered into a strategic partnership with state-backed firms this week. You get a debt to them, and when you can't pay them, they become your partners. Kaiza's filing said that the move is conducive to revitalizing assets of commercial and residential projects and alleviating short-term liquidity difficulties. This is a fancy way of saying bailout because they don't have any money. With Kaiza's shares just over a month ago dropping to their lowest point since their initial public offering, its failure to meet the March 31st deadline to come clean on its debts. Can't borrow another buck from the bank or buy another case of booze. Kaiza has turned to the government for financial help and Beijing was only too happy to oblige. And this partnership is important to the China story as it's definitely a departure from what we've seen over the past few weeks and months, with these state-backed firms buying up various projects from these distressed real estate developers. There seems to be a, a shift where now the real estate developers, Kaiza, are partnering directly with these state-backed firms as a means to shore up their liquidity. And this could very well serve as a template going forward for other firms such as Evergrande, such as Shimao, all these other real estate developers that have shown that they have major cash issues going forward. So while investors, developers have been pleading the People's Bank of China, the PBOC, China Central Bank, to open up the taps, to loosen monetary policy, to loosen restrictions, Beijing seems to be going the other route and just partnering with these real estate firms, partnering up as a means to shore up liquidity, but definitely a bailout. I mean, help us both out. Speaking of distressed developers that, that could also go this route, Genro, another real estate developer in China, defaulted on its debt this week. And while this isn't news in and of itself, as real estate developers we've come to see default on their debts on a quite regular basis in China as of late, the major news comes from the release of Genro's financial statements. They actually did make the March 31st deadline. If you'll remember from the past few weeks, 32 real estate developers failed to make this March 31st deadline and as a result had their shares, their stock trading suspended. However, as we said, Genro was one of the few companies that did make this deadline and did publish their results. And as always, the devil is in the details. Genro's financial statements showed that their net profits over the past year dropped 70%. And therein lies the problem. There was a big concern on the part of international investors over the transparency of these real estate developers heading into the March 31st deadline. There was a big concern as to what these developers were hiding on their books and what would be disclosed, how many hidden debts, how much lack of profits would be found. And with General being one of the few developers that did disclose what, what their books looked like and that disclosure led to a 70% decline in profits, followed by a default, if General was one of the good ones, then what's that say about the other 32 real estate developers going forward? That's not a great sign. If General was one of the good ones, one of the more transparent that was up front with their books, and those books show a 70% decline in profits, 
there's major concerns going forward as to what is hidden on those books of those other 32 real estate developers that did decline to, to make their, their, their financial statements public as of March 31st. No doubt we'll have a better idea of this as the weeks and months goes on, but this 70% decline followed by a default is definitely not a great sign for the rest of the real estate industry in China. Speaking of bad signs in China, the producer price index, the PPI, the prices paid by producers, the prices, the prices paid by producers, and the CPI, China's inflation rate, rose much faster in the month of March than they had initially expected. Now, many in the United States and Canada would probably be salivating right now over a 1.2% CPI, a 1.2% inflation rate going forward, as we're looking at 8, 8.5, 9%, and, and who knows after that inflation rate. But the key factor in China is that their CPI is starting to increase at a time when it really doesn't need it. China has the opposite problem of Canada and the United States right now in that it needs to get people spending. It needs to have high spending, it needs to have a loose monetary policy, low interest rates in order to get spending going, in order to get the economy back up and running. But the higher inflation goes in China, and as we see, it's speeding up. The higher that inflation rate goes, the less tools will be available to the People's Bank of China to help get the economy going again. So if we see a continual rise in PPI and CPI in China, we will no doubt start to see higher prices reverberate in Canada and in the United States, which will create our own problems. We already have our own problems. It will further fuel our current problems of a high inflation rate, which will lead to higher interest rates. This is also a problem for China as it's, as it's decreasing the ability of the PBOC, of the People's Bank of China, to fix their other problems that they're having. So definitely not a great week through and through for China, for the US, for Canada, for the West. But we'll wait and see what happens next week. And as always, we'll have our China update every Friday. If you want to get those updates, click like and subscribe. And thanks so much for watching.